Hello, and welcome back to Redefine Parenting. I am your host, Vinu Keller, and I want to welcome you to Spanglish World Network and her network on Zingo TV, channels 250 and 251. Please remember to download both the Zingo TV app on the respective app stores and iOS and Android devices. While you download, make sure to rate and leave a comment. The app is free. Zingo TV is also available on Google Chromecast, Amazon Fire, Fire Sticks, Roku, Roku Sticks, and also on all smart TVs 2016 and forward. Today, I have a very special guest. This man has changed the trajectory of my daughter. And I say that because, you know, as a parent, we all want to support our kids dreams and desires and one of the things that i've learned in the personal development world is that there's no such thing as a dream when you're actively taking action towards it you know you make it your vision and you complete it and i remember a couple years ago my daughter saying that she wanted to be on the voice and at the time when she would sing, it was like we wanted to close our ears i would joke that our, our ears would bleed and i was so honored to be in touch with this man his name is Anthony Wade. We call him Dr. Voice. And I, I found him through my friend Shay, who was taking voice lessons. And he came on to a mastermind group I'm in and he talked about the voice, but the voice in a way that was beyond what we just heard. It was a voice that we feel within ourselves. And I too have taken lessons from him as a speaker, as a coach, and especially as a mom, trying to enrich my voice so my kids can hear me from within me not just with you know on the outside of me so without further ado i want to welcome dr voice to the show who has many grammy winners underneath him including sam smith this is sam smith's voice coaches everybody so dr voice welcome to the show hi thank you for having me uh, delighted to be here and to share with you all I love it. I love it. So I just want to jump in. You know, we have a little bit of time and I want to jump in because I want to get our listeners to really understand the the gift of the voice, right? Like as parents, you know, we talk to our kids or we talk at our kids. We we're constantly telling them, do this, do that. When we're screaming, our pitch goes up here and we start yelling at them and we want them to do it. And we're wondering why they're not paying attention, why they're not listening to us, why it feels like we're just kind of like talking through them and stop instead of talking with them. This is all due to as a parent, we unfortunately uh, live with our children and with everything else in life. Everyone has this. Uh, we live with what we call expectation <laughs> and we expect our children to understand what we've said because we're grown up and we've learned everything we needed to learn we've grown and we we're, we're strong in what we do and how we see things and we believe that they would know that right somehow there's this arrogance in us as parents that does not stand under the fact that these delicate little minds these young frail human beings have no idea about this life about why they're here about what to do how to be and as a parent we're terrible all parents I, we just go no do this no 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 over there and it's like and the voice over there and what's what's this doing this voice this intent in us to want to see then get it right and we expect them to do it now this is the biggest mistake we make as parents we're living in our own body in our own confusions of life and living going through what we go through and we bring it in to the communication we have with our children right and it's not right it doesn't make them bloom it shuts them down because we're not approaching in the right way and for me my understanding has always been that um when you see a child they they're just they're just in a very fragile place i mean the biggest problem for every human being all the clients i've spoken to all over the world will all, all agree with me on this when i have my one-to-one say oh yeah that happened to me too and i'm talking about very powerful people so they oh yeah that happened to me too and and it's like this, you, 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 you're four or five years old 
and you're drawing a little picture at school, maybe. And right. You go, and you go, man. And you go, yeah, man. And you are in the creative flow of beauty and acceptance that you are drawn with the blue and the red and the green. Yeah, man. And you are so excited that you can do so many. And there's a new crown cover that comes. Oh, that man. And you put that out. And all of a sudden, the teacher comes up and goes, I give you a gold star for that one. Mm. She has just, or he has just screwed you up for the rest of your life. Right. Because now you have a condition on this beautiful, free, expressive young heart to say, no, you've got to do it like this one. Right. And you don't know how to do it like that one. So what happens? Frustration sets in. And then, and then the next day you see little Johnny get a gold star and a chocolate bar and you get nothing. Now, low self-esteem is being programmed into you even further, locking you down inside yourself to make you feel inadequate and to walk through this world and carry that on for the rest of your life until you get old enough to do the therapy that you need, to get old enough to do the, the, the progressive personal development that you need in order to realise that that wasn't right for you. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's so true. And so we have so many different influences that make us feel what's right and what's wrong you know, in our lives. And especially when we're looking at our adult, the adults, like our parents, the teachers that are dictating to us what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. Exactly. And, you know, and I also think that, you know, this is where we also bring the voice into it is, you know, the teachers have a tonality, the parents have a tonality. It's interesting because when I ask parents, you know, when do you feel your, when your kid, when does your kid listen to you? And they say, when I yell. Well, what happens when they yell? They get louder, their voice carries longer. And all of a sudden that we have trained our kids to perk up and listen when we yell. So we're telling our kids five different times, clean your room, clean your room, clean your room, nothing's happening. All of a sudden we raise our voice and all of a sudden they're moving to clean their room. Again, expectation. Yeah. Again, what we're doing, we are actually saying to the children, here it is again, we are actually telling the children what to do. And we expect them to understand and go ahead and do it. Now, here's the thing. As human beings, if I bumped into you somewhere and I went, I want you to do this and get on that train and go over there and get on that bus if you want to go home. You're going to turn around and tell me to mind my own business. Right. 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 A child can't do that. You're the parent is standing there and you're telling it to do this, that, and the other. It's no different to that child. Mm. So, how should you be talking to that child? And this is, I've really put some great thought into this because I've seen communication, the lack of, is the biggest killer on this planet. This is why I became Dr. Voice because I realized that I want to help people have ease in communicating. And that's why I thought, how am I going to do that? Well, what's the biggest communicating instrument we have is the human voice. Show me anything on the planet Earth, anywhere that's worth anything, done anything, created anything or experienced anything that has not been instructed by the human voice. I can't. It's very powerful. The voice is very powerful. And none of us care. We accept this, which is how I am. When we grow up, we live in a world where we say, this is my voice. Some people talk about that. They think that's them. They think that's the sound they are. That's not their sound. And, and, and when you're telling a child, telling a child, Instead of, see, what you would do with a human being when you're grown up, logic tells us, oh, I'm not going to tell this person to do this. I'm going to go over and be kind to them first. Before you tell you to get on a bus or a train, if you, if, before I go and tell you that, I would be kind. Excuse me, uh, are you aware that you can catch a bus? Now, what am I doing? 
Now, I'm not telling you get on a bus and catch a train. I'm just giving this as a metaphor. Uh, I'm asking, do you, do you know what, what train to get you? No, I don't actually. Now what's happening? Now you're in a position of humility between you both and sharing the common thing that you need to share with each other. And this is what it's about. So the point is, when we realize that that, I don't know what that noise is, uh, that's uh, something else. So um, it, when we start to realize that how we talk to each other as grown-ups, and we get that right first, instead of being in the world of what I would call, uh, instead of being in creativity, we go in reaction mode. Right. It's only two modes you can be in in your life. One is creative mode. The other is reaction mode. So I know this being a parent, being with my children, and I split up with my wife many years ago because I had no control over my persona as a father. And I remember at one time arguing with my wife and we were arguing. And, uh, and if she's listening to this, she would know this. And my son would know this. And he came in and he saw me shouting and I started to use my voice and get louder. I could feel it. And as I got louder, it started to diminish the nice vibration of us being a family. And as it got louder, and she apparently got louder, he stepped in between us with a little uh, uh, broom handle. And he had a little uh, Superman's outfit on. And he was only four. And he went, stop. I'm Superman. Wow. Wow. That's when I thought, oh, my God, what are we doing? And we both looked at each other and we knew that we either tone this or we go our separate ways. Right. And we couldn't work it out and we went our separate ways. Because you see... That delicate little darling, my son, and I always have tears over this, um, you know, has gone in life and, and felt the upset of that. And he has held that in him. He's, he's 30 now. <laughs> but it has had an effect on his journey. Right. It had an effect on his journey in life. I know that. I know it's not the whole reason why maybe he goes through things or whatever, but it's definitely a very strong part. Now, what could have happened? in that situation, looking back over the communication systems between me and another human being, both grown up, if we had the common sense to say to each other, hang on, let's get creative. Instead of me reacting to you and freaking out and telling you what you're doing wrong and you've hurt me and I've hurt you and this, stop. If I could have been the first one, and I say it now, I wish I knew this then, uh, if I could have been the first one, excuse me, you're right. I think what you're saying might be right. Can we talk about this? Is there a way that you feel that I could be that would help change this the way that I am? What do you think? Now you've opened it into a question. Now your partner's going, oh, now there's a relaxation. This is called creative communication, not reactive communication. And I really want to also add, like, and this is one of the things that I talk about on the show is the curiosity versus the criticism, right? Be curious, not critical. And so when you're opening it up to a question like that, that's where the curiosity comes. And there's no blame and there's no shame and there's no one feeling like I have to defend and I have to come back at you. So it releases that tension. Absolutely. So I would say this to parents as anyone listening now. Find a way to question. Get loads and loads of piles of questions you can pile up in your own back of your mind and practice. Can I say this? That every single person is consistently practicing something. Absolutely. And if you're going to practice uh, the, the, the feeling of reaction all the time, you will stay in that. Nothing would change. I didn't know this, and I kept practicing that. And it became such a part of my persona, I thought that's how I was. I thought that's who I was. No, it isn't. It's not who we are. 
who we are as this extraordinary, amazing being that's in a human body. Look, we're all in a human body. How is it possible? We're all sitting at home, if you're listening. Listen, you're sitting in here in a human body. And do you know how you're in this human body? It's a phenomenon. It's a phenomenon that we're even here. And what blows me away is that we don't even appreciate that. We're too busy locked into the problems. This should be this way. I'm doing this now. I've got to do that. And that's nothing but hassles. And it creates more hassle. And therefore, we go into reaction mode. And the only time we can be with our heart to stop this mind taking over is to be with our heart. And that is to stop long enough, be still long enough to allow the heart in you to go, hang on, this don't feel right. So the heart has a say. Because what's happening, our mind is too busy having a say all the time and we let it do it. Right. And we end up in pain. And our children end up in pain. Because and we teach them how to think like that. We teach them how to react and be upset with each other. We teach them that. Well, we also teach them how to have expectations. And like that's, you know, I love that you say that because the only way that we can have conflict in our life or misunderstanding in our life is when we have an expectation that has not been met. Yes. And that's what we're also teaching when we're in that reactive mode is like, why are we reactive to what we're reactive to the expectation that is not being met or not being heard or not being seen. And it, and it sent us down this rabbit hole really. And then we're constantly, like you said, practicing that over and over with our kids. And we are the role models as parents. So if it's happening with us, what are we teaching our kids? And it's so, and I just want to, you know, give a little context to this. So if my kids see me and my husband arguing, and then all of a sudden we're watching them argue, we're stopping them from arguing, but where do they learn that? Where do they learn to get upset with each other to resolve the conflict? They weren't born that way. The twins weren't born that way. They obviously saw, oh, well, mom and dad love each other. And then they argue and then they resolve the conflict. So that's what we need to do to resolve our conflict. Exactly. And so there is an answer. There is a way forward. And I and I present I always present this in every one of my programs or seminars or speaking or teaching one to one. And I bring it down to one thing. Your sound. Who you are in your body and your sound, who you really are in there is actually so finely tuned to your sound. Mm. We don't think this. Let me give you an example. A dear friend of mine, my most marvellous teacher, taught me this. He said this. He said, we, when we were born, what was, I, I would say it like this, look, we were syringed into our being, this little tiny drop. And that drop that was put into us is actually infinite. It's infinite. That drop is infinite. And when that drop leaves us, right, it goes back to the ocean. And when it goes back to the ocean, our individuality, who we are, our name and everything like that we've associated with, no longer exists. Because now we have gone one with the ocean. But why is the drop in us? When we understand that the drop is chosen to be in you, that infinite drop, that tiny little infinite drop that's making you in there, which is infinite. What we don't understand, we think it's like, you know, because everything we do has got a beginning and an ending and it's all finite. But this thing inside us is infinite. It's only connection to us. It's only connection to us is our breath. Mm. When the drop goes back to the ocean, the breath goes with it. So when we realize that, therefore, our breath, oh, is a doorway to the drop, to the infinite. Mm. Our breath is a door, and we all know that, but none of us 
understand how to practice that. None of us really truly have appreciated that. And this is what blows me away, is I've all found in my 45 years of working with the human voice, I've found that you can't make sound without breath. So, so breath has to come over the vocal cords and there you are. Now, I'll give you an example. I gave a talk to a lot of people in a room the other day, TV presenters, a company called Aspire. It was amazing. And they, they do this TV presenting. And I was there. And what happened was they, uh, uh, I, was, I was talking. I said, every one of you works so hard at how you look. You get up in the morning, say, look. I've got to look right. Why? Because I'm going for a meeting. Oh, I'm going on television. I'm being a presenter. Or I'm going to meet my boyfriend or girlfriend. Or I'm going out to dinner. We really work hard at making sure we look the part. Why? Because we want to turn up to be the best version of ourselves. We want to turn up being who we really are. Is that correct? And they all in the room went, yes. I said, right. Do you realize? that the closest thing to who you really are is your voice. Hmm. How many of you do voice work? The closest thing to who you are really, your voice is the soundtrack to your life. It's the echo of who you are. Because when you entered this body, when the drop decided to come into ourselves, when it came and entered us, Soon as it entered us, the first experience you had as a human being was the vibration of wah, your sound. Wah, your sound. Not, you didn't come in and you didn't come into the body saying, well, what color nappy am I wearing? How do I look? You came in making sound. So sound was your first port of call to the existence of your life. Mm. And from that point, we forget it. We don't use our sound. We don't use our communication systems properly. We have lost the art of communicating. We've lost the art of communicating. And, and that is the biggest terrible thing that's happening on this planet. Now, just have a look at the planet. How bad is it? I mean, what's going on out there? Mm. This, this country's not talking to this one. That one's not talking to this one. No, no one's sitting down. Having communication. Having communication. Mm -hmm. So it comes from where? And here it is. This is a little trick I want to give all of you if you're listening. Please understand, if you do not feel your sound when you speak, it's going to be either nonsense, just something you've learned, something you think you've got to get over, something you feel that needs to be said, is going to have some sort of irky thing about it. Even in business, I don't care what you're doing. If you therefore breathe and feel your sound. Now, I would like you to try that at home if you're watching. If you took a breath in now, just a nice slight breath in through your nasal only like this. If you do this with me, Vino, it's in. And you tell yourself, oh, it's in. The air's in. What are you done? By saying, it's in. You're telling your breath, look, it's in. You're saying to the infinite drop, I've opened your door. I've opened your door. It's in. Now, once you do that, it's in. Then you feel what you say in that moment. What always comes is nothing but alignment to who you really are. What always comes is the most authentic self you could ever possibly be. What comes is the real you. And no one can stand in the way of that. I love that. I love it. And I think that like it also, even just doing that, it's like when I when I took that breath in, 
and I tell myself it's in, it was a sense of confidence. They, even the way we speak, when we take that breath and we talk in with it, yes. it's a confidence. And it leads me to this question. So I have a client and, you know, she, I would say very meek, right? Like a f- small, small voice. She plays small, she's shy, but she's gorgeous. And when we're on a call, her voice is very loud and she talks and I can hear, I can feel her emotions. And yet when she's at school, it's not there. And her parents are very afraid that she's not, she doesn't have a voice. She doesn't have a voice. And I was like, but she does have a voice. Like I hear her voice. Even when she goes out and orders food or whatever, it's like a small, meek voice. How do you, and for all our listeners out there, I'm sure there's other listeners that feel the same thing about their kids. How, to me, it's the confidence, right? It's the confidence that she feels within herself. It's what you were talking about, that self-esteem inside of her, that self-worth. How do we develop that in our children when judgment is always going to be around? We're always going to be judged, whether you're, you know, this great celebrity, whether you're not, it's like, you're always going to be judged. There's judgment around us and kids are afraid of judgment. So some kids rather swallow their voice, if you would, than have a voice because if they play small and they stay in the shadows, then they don't feel they're out there to be judged. And there's nothing that they have to, you know, um, defend. So how do we help these kids that feel that, you know, they, they don't know how to have a voice? Because right. the voice is just here, right? It's, it's the way that we portray it. It's the volume. It's the confidence that comes out when well, we speak those words. My, my teacher's written a book on this. It's called Hear Yourself. Mm. You see, when you can hear yourself hear what you sound like a confidence will come but we're not listening to ourselves we're not listening to our sound so what happens our mind says oh i can't do that oh no the gremlin comes oh no i don't think i can do that i'm not going to do that in comes the limiting Factor. The thing that has a beginning and the thing that has an ending, the finite thing, comes in and says, oh, no, I don't think I'm going right? Whereas that infinite thing in you is in that hearing of yourself. It's there. You hear it in you. You feel it in you. And then you make sound from there. Let me give you an example. I'm going to say to you now, uh, I'm going to talk to you now. I would normally talk as I'm talking now. I'm just talking, right? So I'm going to say, hello, Vinny, how are you? How are you doing, right? Now, I take a breath in. I feel what I say now. Hello, Vinny, how are you? How are you doing? What's the difference? There's a warm, enriched feeling in the second way you asked or talked to me. There's meaning behind it. It's it's not a shallow, how's the weather type of conversation. All I did, people, please. All I did is it's in. I went and spent time on listening to my sound in the moment. You can't make sound other than in the moment. You can't make sound tomorrow or to yesterday. You can only make sound now in the moment so if you are with your sound when you speak guess what you're in the moment and if you're doing this it's in you're really in the moment because you've invited the infinite drop in you aligned to the moment of your sound and you're creating a presence in you you don't do that. You, it's a practice. You can practice this. You don't practice it. You go back to your mind. You go back to the finite things, the problems. You go back to feeling this way, feeling that way. Oh, this has gone wrong. Why is this way? Oh, I don't know what to do. You go back all over that area. But inside you, when you can be still enough with your sound. So uh, it's easy for me to talk about this because I do it every day. 
I'm always can hard. I'm always singing, using my voice every night up. Oh, I'm using sound and I'm listening and feeling and being with those sounds as I make them. And also, it's in when I talk, it's in I feel good about the sound as it comes out. Because it's me in here doing it, not some concept or belief system or rigid thinking thing that I should be doing. Some thing that I think is the right thing to do. What? What do we have to do the right thing to do? Just be with you and be yourself. A self-expression like that little child that's got stopped. We've got to break out of that. We've got to break out of that and say, no, I want to do that one. I want to do that one. So you've got to say, I want to say this. I want to feel myself when I speak. I want to be with myself when I speak. When you talk to your child, if you were to be with yourself, oh, I'll give an example of my son, Jack, when he lived with me years ago. I'd say to him, Jack, tell the lights off of your school, will you? Well, then. Right. Turn the lights off before you go to school, I said. And I'd say it like that very quickly. Nothing. Never turn the lights off. The day I went, Jack, turn the lights out before you go to school. Oh, no. They were out every time. Why? Because he felt you. He felt your words. He felt your emotion. I'm in business. And, and, he, and he felt the love. Because why? Because if you take the breath in, it's in, you're opening the doorway to that love in that lovely bubble of infinity. That's the love. And so that comes out on the surfboard of your voice and delivers to that person. If you're going to bring your breath in and you're going to make a sound on your breath, you are delivering a vibration of love, of good feeling, of you coming forward on the surfboard of the words you're speaking. And you're going to touch and move, inspire or uplift whoever is in front of you or make them feel comfortable at minimum. I think that this is so important because and just for the listeners out there, when when you were first saying hear yourself and I was thinking, I don't like to listen to myself. I don't like to, I don't like the way I sound when I play back the video. And then when I hear you now, it's hearing yourself when you take that breath and you talk yes. it's in the moment of hearing yourself it's not the playback it's the in the moment yes and this and is you, what we all want to be and the other person feels you so much more there's not urgency there's not rush because we ask ourselves i know i ask myself this all the time with my kids it's like why aren't they listening and then i have to go back and say well how was i seeing it i was seeing it in a very rushed tone of voice that, you know, like we got to go, come on, come on, come on. So everything's rushed. So what happens when we're rushed? Everything gets discombobulated in our head. What are we forgetting? What are we doing? We're going through a million different checklists in our head. So when we're talking in that tonality to our kids too, we're adding to the chaos that's going on in their brain. But when we take a moment, and this is what I'm just learning in this moment from you, Dr. Boyce, is that when we take a moment to take that breath in, and then we speak with absolute intention with the voice. Yes. It's in that moment when we're feeling it, we know they have felt it. Yes. And this is a practice. Because, yeah. look, you will forget. You will go off and after the show you'll go home and you'll see your daughter and say, don't, don't do this. Don't, and, and, <laughs> and you'll remind yourself, that, hang on, whoa, whoa. This is it. This is the journey we're on. We have to practice. Everything is a practice. If you don't practice doing that when you go home, you'll continue to practice the same uh, uh, iniquity, the same problem, the same issue. We'll just keep arising. So you need to practice. And the beautiful thing, the most beautiful thing you can do to practice is to stop. Hear yourself. Get that book. I mean, it's amazing. Hear yourself and then feel your presence. That's powerful. That, that's where then if you do voice work as well, guess what? 
you are becoming an orchestra. You see, when you talk to your children, they see and they look at you and they hear you. Let's just say you're a typical person at home with your kids. Don't do that, love. I told you not to do that. Leave it alone. I told you this. Da, da, da. What's that? That's like one instrument. It's like a bassoon. It's going, boom, 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 boom. It's just one sound. And that child is sitting there and all it's hearing is one sound. And, it's, and that's the intent of the, you're giving that child because you're in that mode. Right. That's the mode you were brought up in. That's the mode you learned. When you do voice work, you take your voice up to different areas. Oh, oh ah. Ah, you can go into different colours and therefore your voice becomes an orchestra. So mm -hmm. and when you start talking and you start sharing at different levels of your voice, it brings different moods. If you, if I did this, right? What's that create? A mood. And some people talk like that. Right. They're in that mode. They might do the odd one. Maybe around it. But there's this. Different mood. Right. Now we've got a different mood. We've got musical. It's mood. So you're going. Now, in your voice, what? I didn't realise that was the case. I'm so sorry. However, you know, be animated in your experience of your sound more as a practice. And I'm not saying this because a lot of people don't like me when I do this. They say, oh, you're just being, you're just being, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, um, a, on a thespian. You're, you're being an actor on stage. And I said, well, hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, yeah. But hang on. Are we not actors on the stage of this life? Every day of our life. As our man said, Shakespeare, are we not actors on this stage of life? Start getting your act together to be with these lovely sounds in your orchestra. You're missing them. You're missing them. And so when you wait these different tonalities in your own voice and you hear them and you feel them, it's exciting. Yeah. It's exciting. You just, I just had another aha moment. I have so many aha moments with you. It's, I remember having a teacher that was very monotone and it was the, 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 like you were playing, right? Just like one tone. And it's like, we would go to sleep in his class. We didn't want to be in his class. It was very boring in his class. I, we hated that class. Like all of us would dread to go to that class. And then we had teachers that had more of the animated, the orchestra playing in their voice. Yes. And they made class feel alive to us. It was like, we couldn't wait to be in that class. We like lived in the moment of what they were teaching. They made you feel like you were a part of it. Yes. And it was really just in that moment that you were saying that I was like, wow. Cause in, when you're describing this, I'm like trying to figure out which examples I can put to this to, to really make this alive for me. And immediately I went to being in class in high school and just having that difference of the monotone teacher versus the, almost theatrical teacher in the voice, you know, that, and it wasn't even their, their demeanor that was theatrical. It was just their voice. It was like a choir, an yes. orchestra, like every instrument hearing that in the voice, which made us want to listen even more. Yes. You know? So I, I'm curious about this. What about the people that have different voices, like nasal voices, deep, deep deep voices high pitched uh, voices that are pitchy like are we born with these 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 no no, we're, we're, no it, it, it's learned habits and 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 mostly uh, some people are misfortunate that they might be born with a left cleft palate or something cleft palate or can't express things but mostly it is learned and the see the thing is, uh, and and why people are like this, move on. You don't have to stay there. Move on. Find somewhere that you can go and express yourself. And be, look, I've really learned one thing. We're not here. 
to be great at maths, to be great at science, to be great at music, to be great at these things. We're not here to achieve anything. We're here to dance. Mm. We're here to have fun. That's the purpose of this human existence. You know, and I proved this when I worked at the prison. I worked at a prison for five years teaching uh, children who have been offenders, young offenders in, in Kent, in England. And when I take these children, I notice that they, you know, they were very down and very unhappy children, being murderers and paedophiles, all sorts there. And they're all from the ages of 11 right up to 18 years old. And I remember the head of the uh, 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 place come up to me. He said, oh, Doctor, if I say you do, I said, all right. He said, um, I said, look, excuse me, I hope you don't mind, but you keep giving me maths lessons to teach. I'm a music teacher. You throw me in with maths, and I, ha I have no idea what a fraction is. How can I teach these children maths? And it was so funny because he said, well, you see, we, we know little Alan who comes to your classes. He doesn't go to any of the maths classes, but when he knows you're teaching it, he comes. Really? He said, yeah. And when he comes... He passes GCSE this month because he came to your lessons, because he did his maths. Even though I gave him the work, which was handed out, I didn't teach anything, but because in my lesson, I would animate. I would, oh, I would be interesting for them. I would do funny things. I would make them laugh. I would make them feel good about themselves. So that opened the door for them to want to express or feel or learn more. That's what I did. And he, and he said, so as far as we're concerned, you're the best maths teacher we've got in the school. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting that you say this, even like with the tonality up and down, because um, like I said in the beginning, um, Dr. Boyce, you have been coaching my daughter going on two years now. And I remember when she came to you, she had a very high pitchy voice. She was trying to imitate sounds so she can sound like singers. And now she has her own voice. And it's interesting because I've also listened to her reading. When she reads, she reads with such inflection in her voice now. It's like almost a joy to hear her read. And like I can hear her even with, whether there's punctuation or not. The punctuation, she definitely emphasizes the exclamation points and the questions. But it's yes. so interesting what you have taught her over the last you know, year and a half about how to create yes. that colorful orchestra in her voice. And I hear it not just in her singing because she practices every night, especially in the shower. I, I don't know if it's the echoing in the shower, but that's her place to really shine. Yes. Um, but when I hear her read even, it's I've seen since working with you, this shift in her voice when she's reading a story versus mm -hmm. her twin brother, right? Like they read the same story and he's almost, again, I mean, he has inflection in his voice, but compared to her, it would be, I would consider it more monotone, but hers comes to life when she reads a story and it makes her even more excited now. Like it's built her own self-confidence just in taking these voice lessons with you. It's well, everything in her. She's such a darling. And, and what she's doing, she's learning to listen to herself. Mm. wasn't doing that before she's just barking off like we all do like we all do you just bark off we don't listen to ourselves when we listen what's the sound going to come out now what am i going to say what's my intent what do i want to instruct or inform or encourage here or do I just want to go boo out from the top of my head which is why many relationships split up. Right. Because so we, they're all in their heads about, oh, you did this, I did that, that. And, it, and you see, for me, it's stopping, just stopping the practice of all this illusionary concepts and beliefs about who we think we are and what we should be doing and why we're doing it and start to feel your own presence in your sound, in the moment. That's it. You can't get closer to you 
more than you can do in that. You can if you do other things, obviously, like meditation and deep reflection. There's so many other things on the planet that helps us to get closer to who we really are and to hear ourselves more, which is what I did for 10 years. I, I spent, you know, meditating for 10 years of my life, you know. And, so and, we have just a few more minutes, and I have a question, because you've worked with a lot of Grammy winners, Ariane Grande, right, and Sam Smith. No, 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 not Ariane Grande. Not Ari no. Okay, I'm sorry. So Sam Smith and who else? Who else have you worked with? Well, Lorraine Crosby, she was on a Grammy Award record, I Would Do Anything For Love. She's one of my dearest friends and a, a great, uh, and got a Grammy for that. She, uh, well, Meatloaf got it, but she was the singer on the track with him, which made that song get a Grammy, basically. Um, and then uh, I've worked with, uh, with George Michael, who had many Grammys. Uh, I've worked with um, people who've been to my studio over the years, countless amounts of people. Uh, I, I sort of don't, you know, I don't, clock that up on my board because what is more important to me is have I made a difference and uh, did I in, in, in give the love where I'm supposed to and did I uh, help them get, achieve some movement forward in their life and that's the most important thing I'm looking at Sam Smith today for instance now Sam was with me for five years and I did his first demo album uh, which got him his deal or he went forward to get his deal with Universal Records after he came to the prison to see the kids you know, I was working there at the time as well and he came down to you know because uh, he had his song out in the charts then and what was incredible was um, when he went forward got his Grammy Award and everything like that I, I believe he started to set himself off into the freedom of his own self-expression and now he I've got to admit uh, I'm not going to judge him what he's doing now everybody's freaking out but he's just saying I can be what I want to be and when I want to be it and okay there is such a thing as we all must look at somewhere along the line is decency uh decency is a very wholesome and beautiful quality to have uh, but you know i'm not saying he's indecent but i'm saying you know he's on the borderline of perhaps offending people uh, uh that is i don't agree with that but i do agree with the fact that he's just being self-expressive and allowing it to happen and that's wonderful i don't knock him for that so here's my question with all these Grammy winners that you've had the pleasure of working with, like I'm blown away with George Michael too. I was definitely a fan of his. What would you say is that two millimeter that really helped them to get where they're at? Would you say it comes back to hearing themselves? Like, what is it? Is, is there a common denominator with these people that come to you to say, help me to enrich my voice? It's, it's not just Grammy Award winners, it's everybody, speakers. Right, right. Uh, you know, people that can't be coherent when they speak. Uh, I teach people to tune into who they really are. The key is I've always been hell-bent on trying to be, pe bring people into who they really are. And I say this to everybody, I do this, this is the work that I do. When I said to BBC Television over here when I went on this TV programme with Jerry Hannawell and Rob Beckett, and I said, they asked me, what's the greatest thing you've achieved in your life, Dr. Voice? What is the greatest thing you've done? And it weren't, I've got these Grammys, and it wasn't that. I said, the greatest thing I've achieved if you want the honest answer is the ability to experience, I've accrued the ability to experience nothing but unconditional love for everyone that's in front of me. Mm, I love and that. And I just follow through with that. And if they become award winners, great. If they get re high record deals, great. Most of them get record deals, a lot of them do come to me. And, 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 and if they find their true sound in their voice, when they get to the beams in them, which is my whole thing, is waking up the human being. There's a beam in all of us, and it's a very powerful beam. Now, some, of you, some of you are banging your television, thinking it's your television, but it was me. And that is the first sound inside your little drop. Mm. It's coming from that drop. And so what I've done, I've developed skills of being able to take that and turn it into, oh, 
the four beams. And when you feel that in your body, oh my God, you become so attuned to who you really are in your singing, in your singing and in your speaking. You hear Oprah, I know every one of you. She does all these amazing beams and she talks. Most people do that under, don't understand they're doing it. Most of them don't understand they're doing it. That's the incredible thing. Uh, um, so, uh, so it's really in, intriguing to see the change in people when I bring that into the awareness. Uh, that's where the change happens through the unconditional love of working with people. And it's just beautiful to watch people grow and expanding and, and do well from it. I love it. I love it. I love it. You have brought in so much gold to us today to our listeners and i just want to tell you how grateful i am for you being a part of my daughter's life my life and now the listener's life you guys can find more about dr voice um you know on the website dr voice what is your website uh dr voice that's dr voice as written on the screen there dot tv it's simple dr voice dot tv and uh, i'm very happy to talk to anybody that wants to share about themselves in any way shape or form uh i'm in england of course but you can always call me on whatsapp um i'm very open to discussion on this subject because if i can help a person budge themselves out of the mess of the miscommunication in their life that's my greatest joy. I love it. I love it. Thank you again for being with us. If you are finding value in the conversations here on our show, please join our Redefined Parenting group on Facebook for even more tips and conversation. Do someone you know a favor and share my group with them as well so they too can hear what they need to in order for them to feel supported in their parenting journey. This show can also be heard on Spanglish Radio Network. Please check out www.spanglishworld.ca for all your news and programming. Spanglish World, watch it, hear it, read it, download it, and live it.